Hi, I'm E.D. Lewis, and welcome back to my channel, uh, E.D. Lewis Reviews, for another Nocturnal Review, and another part in my Dracula series. It's the ninth episode, or part, of my Dracula Reviews. Now, before we get started, I, uh, the other day, yesterday, which is, uh, which says Saturday, because today is Sunday, I got a piece of mail. I got a Halloween card. This is ironic, because I actually already have an a Halloween card uh, already made out and uh, waiting to waiting for me to mail it to this person. So I got it from Regina at Regina's Haunted Library. Um, it has, you know, Halloween cat with a witch hat and, uh, well, black cat is what I mean by Halloween cat, uh, and bats in a forest. So it looks really cute, really cool. I like that. And it says inside, Dear ED, I hope you have a wonderful Halloween season. Hope, uh, hope nothing but fun crosses your path this Halloween. Love Regina, Batilda, and Lily. And there's a little picture of Lily. It's a little bright in here, which I don't know why. I don't know if you can see. There we go. There's Lily. I don't know why it's so bright in here. I don't have any more light on in here than I normally do, so I don't know what the deal with that is. So thank you, Regina. And I actually have your card ready to go. I just got to get it stamped and mailed out. So. Um, so let's get started with the review. Oh, by the way, um, if you're interested in any of my earlier episodes, they are in my on my channel. I don't have a playlist yet because the series is not done yet. Though I have pre have jumped the gun a few times and made playlists already, and then added more videos to them later. I'm not doing that at this time with this one. But I will put a link to my previous Dracula review, which is the book by Free Warrington, Dracula: The Undead, and also I'll link. My review of the Universal Studios Draculas, which fits in with this review of Dracula Untold from 2014. Um, it stars Luke Evans as Dracula himself, as well as Dominic Cooper as Sultan... Uh, I have no idea how to pronounce it. I am so sorry. I wish I did. But he's the Sultan, the leader of the, uh, the Turkish uh, Empire. And... Um, Charles Dance as, well, we'll get to, we'll get to that. And it was directed by Gary Shore. Um, this film was originally intended to be the start of Universal Studios Dark Universe. That, however, did not happen, and they decided to go forward with The Mummy, which was unsuccessful, and I have my thoughts on that one, but, I mean, that's a diff that's not this video. So we're not going to talk about that. Um... This film shows the origin story of Dracula. Here, I'll put it so you can see it. I mean, it's glary, but you know. It's the origin story of Dracula and also sets up kind of a new storyline for him because it does not work as a prequel to the Dracula novel for uh, obvious reasons. One being the Dark Universe, excuse me, and two. Um, they were intending it to just be a standalone film anyway, just, just to reboot Dracula, which was kind of an interesting idea. This film does have its problems, and I will talk about that when we get there, but here's just a brief synopsis. So, in 1462, um, Dracula uh, investigates um, evidence of Turkish uh, tr um, scouts in the area near this mountain. Uh, this mysterious mountain. So he goes in with a few, he goes in and he discovers that there's a bunch of bodies in this cave, remains of bodies anyway, and this uh, horrific creature that hides in the dark. And it has obviously killed these people. He fights a little bit. He does uh, strike it with his blade, and in the sunlight, the blood evaporates from his sword. Meanwhile, he's preparing for tribute to the, tr the Turk forces, and when the Turk forces come there, they want more than just the tribute of silver. They want 1,000 boys to basically be sold into bondage, essentially, and um, to basically learn to fight basically for the, the Ottoman Empire. Well, one of uh, they want that, which enrages his people, and also, they, he want his son. Well, this doesn't fly with Dracula very well, and so he goes back to the mountain after discovering the uh, origins from the local monks, 
about this creature that it had come to that it was a man who had come to the mountain seeking power and knowledge from some as they would call it a demon and it gave him you know the power but it trapped him in the cave and he cannot leave well dracula goes in and he finds out that this creature has been waiting for a person such as him to um strike a deal with him and release him from the cave he agrees to give dracula these powers and says that if you uh you'll get these powers but you will you'll die and you'll become a lot like me now if you over the course of three days if you can abstain from drinking blood from hum drinking human blood you will go back to normal and i will remain trapped in this cave but if you do succumb i'll be released and i will call upon you and at some point he will uh make him assist him in a as he says a game of revenge on the creature that had done it who had done this to him so he drinks the blood of the creature and he dies and wakes up with these powers and he cannot go out in the sun sunlight uh silver hurts him and but he has all these miraculous powers he can turn to a swarm of bats is all really cool and so he goes out to fight the uh, Turkish army and the Turkish forces to protect not only his people, but also his family. Um, all in all, it, it gives kind of the typical trope that's become, uh, con that's become part of the Dracula mythology nowadays. And since, like, really the 1970s of Dracula being a sympathetic character, they give him a motivation for why he wants to become this creature, or how he becomes this creature, and, um, you know, we, we're, we're able to feel and, you know, like, understand him better. Um, the film does have its problems, though. Excuse me. One of them, and this, I think, is, uh, well, one of them is historical, and it's not very historically accurate. Personally, I don't care about that because I, I watch it for entertainment value. And it's really cool to watch. Um, it's not very historically accurate, for one. Uh, especially, Dracula did not um, rule Transylvania. Prince Vlad, the historical Prince Vlad, he uh, ruled in Romania in a certain... Uh, I can't remember the area of Romania that he ruled in, necessarily, but... Um, he did not rule in Transylvania. So, um, another issue with this, in this, I would say personally, is one of the biggest issues with me, is that the uh, Turkish cast is so whitewashed. None of them are being played by, you know, people, people of Turkish descent at all. They don't look like how they're supposed to. There's this one character, he's like blonde-headed and stuff. I mean, he could have been like someone that had been raised in the Turkish army, you know, as a, you know, at by someone, you know, he'd been sold into this, I suppose, but it's very clear he is not Turkish, and it, it shows, it, it's so blatantly obvious, and that part just kind of bothers me a little bit. It's, it just, it doesn't look right. It looks, it looks wrong, but. Not to mention, I like Dominic Cooper, but he, he does not look, never mind. Um, we're just not going to go into it further. Um, let's just say he, he doesn't look the part. It, he'd be better suited in a different role. I don't know a different role in this movie, but a different role. Maybe a, a different Dracula film. I don't know. Maybe he should play Dracula in the new Dracula film that Universal is coming up with. I don't know. The other issue is that they were trying to make this part of and set up the Dark Universe franchise. Well, when they started making this film, I guess it wasn't originally part of it, and then they got the go-ahead, so they uh, did some reshoots, and they did film a brand new scene, which is the ending scene of the film, um, which is part of why it won't work as a prequel to, Tra of the Dra to the Dracula novel by Bram Stoker, because it sets it up in modern day, and we do see another character from Dracula pop up briefly at the very tail end. Um, the other reason why, of course, it doesn't fit, though, as a prequel to Dracula is because in the book Dracula, the Scalamance is mentioned, which if you've seen my previous review and 
excuse me, my review on Dracul, which both talk about the origin of Dracula and the Scalamans, um, it obviously does not fit. Although, we do have the whole thing with the mountain and a cave and, you know, knowledge and becoming a creature. So, anyway, that's close we're going to get to the, the um, origin that obviously Bram Stoker set up in his novel. I think they could have done without some of that. I think they should have made it more like a standalone, and then if it took off then when they were going to make the sequel, then they could make it, you know, go into this dark universe. Or even if they thought about it being part of the dark universe, they could have just not filmed more scenes or changed things to where it would work into one, just kind of build off of this movie. Or, you know, make another film somewhere else in the Dark Universe and have it later connect or something or have references. You know, I, I don't think they handled it overly well. The film is not perfect by any means, but it's entertaining to watch. It has really cool effects and gives kind of a little twist on the story of Dracula. Um, but like I said, it didn't do so well in theaters, um, but recently... I did see somewhere, I don't remember where the article was, that the film has gotten in a sec has been gaining a second life through streaming. So apparently it's becoming popular to stream. But so if you have a mind to check out Dracula or want to check out something a little different for an origin story, I guess, do check out Dracula Untold. Oh, by the way, Charles Dance plays I forgot. Charles Dance plays the, the, the creature in the cave, the vampire in the cave that, you know, makes the deal with him. Sorry, I forgot to say that. But anyway, that is my review for Dracula Untold, uh, part nine of my Dracula review series. I will see you next time with a new uh, nocturnal review, and I'll see you on my next Dracula review when I get there. It will be a book next time, and um, yeah, so I will see you then. So have a great October, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.